If you know your chronotype, you can learn the best time to have sex, eat a cheeseburger, ask your boss for a raise, um, talk to your kids, have a conference with the teacher. Like it's really interesting once you understand where somebody is in their chronotypical day. Hey friends, welcome to Keep It Simple Sexy. I'm Christine Bullock, founder of KO Body Care, certified fitness trainer and mom of two little girls who's just trying to juggle it all and feel as good as possible. I'm so grateful that you're here. Now let's get started, sexy. Today we are talking all about energy. And I don't know about you, but between running my house, momming my two little girls, and running a business, I'm always depleted on energy. When I talk to my girlfriends, they're all feeling the same. And today we're going to talk about how to boost and balance your energy levels based on the way your DNA combines with nature, something called your body type and your chronotype. Do you start dragging midday? You could be a bear. Do you jump out of bed ready and hungry for the day and for food, you could be a lion. Love to work in the evening, you could be a dolphin. So if I've intrigued you or confuse you, stay tuned. And in 30 days, my next guest can have you feeling happier and more energized. Today's guest is Dr. Michael Bruce. He's a clinical psychologist, a diplomat of the American Board of Sleep Medicine, and a fellow of the American Academy of Sleep medicine. Pretty amazing. He has been in practice for 23 years. He has been featured on the Dr. Oz show more than 40 times. He writes regularly for Psychology Today and was named the top sleep specialist in California by Reader's Digest. Dr. Bruce is the author of The Power of When, The Sleep Doctor's Diet Plan, and Beauty Sleep, along with his new book, Energize, which we'll be talking about today. Dr. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm feeling sexy already. I love it. <laughs> um, this is awesome. I love this How show. How have we and not heard that before, that intro? <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Well, because I have good sleep, good movement, good eating habits. It's definitely taking its toll in a good way um, yeah. and making me feel better. So thanks for having me on the show. I love the energy around this show. No pun thanks. intended. Um, <laughs> and uh, I love I love that word you used, momming. I hadn't heard that before. I'd only heard like parenting. There really <laughs> is a momming for sure because there's definitely a dadding. So there's definitely a momming. I love that. Yeah. It's nonstop, man. That's the job <laughs> that never ends 24 hours, even while you're sleeping. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're but right. But I love that. I love that you said, I mean, and that's what the show is actually about. It is a play, like the word sexy, I think can be you know, it's like a whim. We're, we're kind of playing with it, but you really do feel your best ultimately um, when you're the healthiest. And yeah. I think the key to that is understanding what one of the signs of that is the healthiest is your energy levels. Right. And I know I've been through it all. It is truly, I mean, I have two little girls under four. I probably wow. feel the most depleted now, but I work on it. I am very healthy. Um, but you know, I've been through thyroid issues. Okay. I've been through, um, like autoimmune stuff before, and I yeah. know what it feels like to be depleted and, you know, to be on the other side of that. And when you're energized and healthy, you are truly your happiest and you are there. You can ultimately be there the most for your children, for your family, for your friends, for your business, whatever it may be. So it is the key. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, I wanted to, I wanted to make a quick comment because yeah. uh, in the, in the intro, you talked about how you were in the fitness industry and you were in all of that stuff and doing all that stuff and you weren't energetic and you weren't healthy. Like, so I'm here to tell you that the same thing happened to me. So if people get an opportunity to pick up the book, Energize, you'll see in the in the intro, it talks about me actually having a cardiac event. So I'm one of the healthiest people I know. I was running three, five Ks a week. I was intermittent fasting and only feeding for, you know, four and a half hours a day. Like everything was to the max. And I ended up having a cardiac event in the middle of a restaurant one night, one night scared the crap out of my wife and my entire family because I was over doing it. You know what? Energy and health is about balance. And that's really what I like about this podcast and what I know that you're, you stand for, which is balanced energy, having the time to do the things for you, do the things for your friends and family and have a holistic kind of outlook. I, I really want to say I'm really impressed by you having taken the time to step back from that universe and really focus on yourself because that's literally what happened, what had to happen to me and why I wrote the book. 
And it's funny because you hear, you know, I'm from Pittsburgh and it's it's oh. changed a lot since then. But, you know, you see a lot of people on one side where they, you know, and this is before it's evolved, but we didn't have the workout programs that we had there that we maybe have in Los Angeles. But in Los right. Angeles, everybody's working out three, four hours a day and they're feeling great. <laughs> and it, that is not balance. You know what I mean? No. You're on the spectrums here. And it's so you not. talk about that in your book. The, with right. your energy scales, you're exhausted or you're energized, and maybe yep. there's a little bit in between. Can you break that down a little bit? Sure. So first of all, I spent a summer in Pittsburgh at Western Psychiatric Institute and Clinic, doing a summer fellowship there downtown in Oakland. Loved it. Had I so worked there. Did you? Very briefly. Yeah, I did like in college a, you know, an internship or whatever there. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. It was mm -hmm. so much. I learned so much. Um, great, great town, Pittsburgh, by the way. If folks have never had an opportunity to go there. It's a cool place to go. But yeah, energy. So how do we measure it? And what is my energy scale? So I actually took an energy scale from somebody else because it was already scientifically valid and proven. This is called the Borg Perceived Exertion scale or perceived exertion rating. So what this is, is a number from zero to 10. And we just ask you to think about right now from an energetic perspective or your energy level, where are you? We have you do it five different times of day. So right after you wake up in the morning, then before lunch, then maybe a little bit after lunch, we know that's a big time for people to not have a lot of energy, that one to three in the afternoon time, then maybe just before dinner and then just before bed. We have you do this for approximately one week, these five separate times, because we want you to see where your energy highs and your energy lows, because we've all got them, right? We don't necessarily know when they always are. Some of them are easy to predict, like that after lunch kind of feeling of I'm going to chill out. Maybe I'd like to take a nap right now type of thing. Um, but understanding when to uh, monitor your energy turns out to be super important because then we can zoom in on just those times and give you energy boosters to keep that energy consistent. You know, and I love that. And it's something that we hear over and over again from all of our um, experts in here, and especially the doctors, truly, that health is personalized. And I love yeah. hearing it, especially from the doctors, because there's always been like, you know, you hear from the other side sometimes of other physicians, it's a one size fits all, whether it's a pill or it's a this or no. it's that, it's a program. But we're no. really asking people over and over again to tune in to their own bodies first off to find what their answers are um, yeah. in their energy, you know, gains and drains. Absolutely. So are there common, you know, what are the common signs, I guess, well, How so would somebody it, know if they are a balanced energy level or whether right. they probably could use some help? So if anybody's nicknamed you the Energizer Bunny, then you're probably decent on the energy scale, right? I, a lot of <laughs> it's unbelievable the number of people. I'm who are so like, jealous of those people. <laughs> I, I'm the energy, Energizer Bunny type of thing. You know, people notice when they have energy more so when they don't have it than when yeah. they do, right? So they're like, oh. I'm dragging ass, Michael. Like, oh, I just don't want to go to one more ballet recital. You know, I've seen 12, you know, that kind of thing. And so we have a tendency to notice when our energy is lowest. But one of the things that the book has done a nice job of, and, and to be fair, it, it, you don't have to have read my last book, The Power of When, but there is a concept in there that's extremely important. And it's called a, something called a chronotype. So your chronotype, now, by the way, you've probably heard of this before, but you just haven't heard of the word chronotype. If anybody's ever called you an early bird or a night owl, those are chronotypes. So interestingly enough, in my third book, which was called The Power of When, we were able to find an easy way to discover which one you are. I have a quiz um, and it's called the chronoquiz.com. So if you look in the show notes, I'm sure it'll be in there, chronoquiz.com to figure out what your chronotype is. Now, Turns out there's four chronotypes and each one has a little bit of a different energy level. So the number one early birds, we call them lions. So these are people who get up at like 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. They're usually the COO of a company. They make a list every day and go from step one to step two to step three, kind of militant in their thinking. Very I'm married conscious. to that. <laughs> yeah, that can be a problem. <laughs> Especially if you're not one, right? Yeah. But they can be motivating or a pain in the ass. Just depends mm -hmm. on which both, one. Yeah. You're a bit of both, right? <laughs> depends on which one it is. But th that's my early bird or my lion. 
in the middle, which we used to call a hummingbird, I call them bears. Um, bears actually are kind of in the middle. They like to go to bed around 1030. If you're an adult, they like to get up around seven, 730 in the morning, kind of in the middle. To be clear, I wish I was a bear. It's the best to be a bear because I'm a bear. Of, are you? <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. most of society works on a bear's schedule. I really wish I was a bear. I'm a wolf, which is the which is the vernacular for a night owl. I've always been one ever since I was a teenager in high school. I just don't think I ever left. I never go to bed before midnight ever. Um, my night owls like me, uh, who we call wolves, um, we have a tendency to be artists, actors, authors, um, sometimes athletes, but not usually. Usually my athletes are my lions who are getting up at 4.30 in the morning and go, go, going. Um, but those are the only, those are only three of the chronotypes. And to be fair, we've all kind of heard about those before, you know, early bird, night owl, got to be somebody in the middle. My contribution to the literature was a fourth chronotype that I call a dolphin. So dolphins are people who have a genetic predisposition for insomnia. By the way, all of these are genetic. You can't force yourself to be a lion or force yourself to be a night owl. It's just in your genes or it's not. So we took this concept of the four chronotypes, um, which can tell you a whole lot about yourself, by the way. Um, if you know your chronotype, you can learn the best time to have sex, eat a cheeseburger, ask your boss for a raise, um, talk to your kids, have a conference with the teacher. Like, it's really interesting once you understand where somebody is in their chronotypical day, when to talk to them about a particular topic becomes very, very important. So we took those four chronotypes and we layered on what we call body types. Now, you got to go back to high school biology for this one. If you remember somebody telling you that there was an endomorph, mesomorph, and ectomorph, right? So, I, I mean, it took me a while to kind of get back to all of that biology, but that's genetic as well. And so what we learned when we combined the chronotypes with the body types, I learned all of the rules for intermittent fasting. I learned exactly what to do and move during the day and exactly when to sleep and wake up. So it's literally, it gives you the tactics to be able to just say, plug and play. I'm a, I'm a fast lion. So this is what I do. I'm a slow bear. So this is what I do. And it's all right there in the book. And the times of the day. That's so interesting. Can you break down the body types for everybody just as a reminder to what they are yeah, as well? Yeah, because to be I fair, kind of had that high school image. Right, maybe right. And Del Moore for something like that in these, my head. Right, these three yeah, things. Just that, come what, back. what the hell do they look like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so our ectomorphs are our long and lean people, right? So have a tendency to be a little on the thinner side, actually have a hard time putting on weight. Um, our mesomorphs are kind of in the middle, more of a V-shaped, kind of hang their weight on their body in a symmetrical way. Um, endomorphs have a tendency to be a little bit bigger, have a tendency to gain weight, let's say, on their, on their hips or for guys around their middles. Um, and so when you really look at those body types, it has a lot to do with how quick your metabolism is. So the long and leans have a fast metabolism. The mesomorphs or medium people have a medium metabolism. And the endomorphs who are a little bit bigger, they have a slower metabolism. So follow this. So in the book, if you like intermittent fasting, and let me just also tell people what intermittent fasting is. We do. I, we talk about it. I, oh, okay, I Almost right. everybody I ask. No, please tell, tell okay. the viewers. But we're always hitting it in our speed round because I love to hear people either intermittent fast or not. <laughs> so I've been an intermittent faster for about five mm -hmm. years um, and I really like it, but I've learned the rules to intermittent fasting. So number one, you can do it too much and you can end up hurting yourself. So you need to be careful about intermittent fasting. And the two things, your chronotype and your body type actually tell you when and how long to fast. So so I've been, as I said, I've been fasting for a while, right? It's like, oh, no duh, right? <laughs> so if you're a if you're a lion, then your feeding time is early in the morning because that's when your metabolism is biggest and ready to go. But if you're a night owl like me, you don't eat until after lunch usually because that's when your metabolism really wants to kick in. So knowing when to feed is based on your chronotype. The next question people ask me is, well, how long do I fast and how long do I feed? Because there's a million different ways to do it. You do this based on your body type. So our ectomorphs, our long and lean people, we don't want them fasting for too long. So they'll feed for 12 hours, fast for 12 hours. Our mesomorphs are kind of in the middle people. We want them to fast for 10 hours and I'm sorry, fast for 14 hours and feed for 10 hours. Our endomorphs who are a little bit on the bigger side who want to lose some weight, they can feed for eight hours and fast for 16 hours. So now all of a sudden you got a starting point. 
right? You can say, okay, I'm supposed to fast in this time of day. And for this length of time is where my feed is. And you, once you start there, then you personalize it all to you. Because the whole thing about intermittent fasting is nobody really has any great rules to go by. And so now you've got some rules. I love this. This is like adds so much to everything that we're learning on this podcast. It's so perfect. You have that base to what you need to do. Exactly what you're saying. I mean, I understand this in the sense, I think we have all of those body types in my family. My little daughter mm -hmm. is like nonstop, eats <laughs> everything, hard to put you know, weight on her. Obviously she's not going to intermittent fast, but I can see that within right. the body types. My husband is the, the last one, you know, and as the lion too, he doesn't even like eating late at night. So I think, right. you know, our viewers can think, start to think about this within your yeah. family or like if I approach my husband and his energy's down at night, like I'm going to get a really grumpy answer. So exactly. I love how you were just saying, even within the energy levels, if you're asking for a raise, if <laughs> you're asking, you know, to up the budget of your family or something right. like that, whatever it is, like there are more appropriate times and, and there's so much psychology within that too. It's there is, you know, really I, I have a great example. Uh, you mentioned your daughters. You have two girls. Is that right? Two, two little girls. Yeah. So I have a big boy and a big girl. I have a 19 year old son and an 18 year old daughter now. Um, just became an empty nester. By the way, it sucks. Anybody oh. who, li who likes the idea of their children leaving, trust me, it's not as good as it sounds. <laughs> um, so I was in charge of mornings at my house um, and um, I would go in for my daughter um, and I would say, hey, Carson, you know, it's time to get up at seven o'clock, whatever. And she'd be like, oh leave me alone, right? Because she's in that typical teenager, late night, late morning chronotype, right? I never get a word out of her. And, and I, I would try to say things like, hey, what's going on in your day today? What's going to be fun or exciting? And literally she would grunt at me, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember walk, those days. That was right. me. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So then if I, but if I walk in at like four o'clock in the afternoon, when she's come home from school and I ask her the same question, like, hey, Carson, what have you got? What did you have on the plate today? I'm in there for an hour and a half, Aww. right? There's nothing more important than my relationship with my kids, specifically my daughter and my son. So finding the time when I can connect with a teenager who generally doesn't want to connect with a parent, it's like gold, right? And so you can use this idea of chronotype. Once you get it in you, it becomes a communication tool for your whole family. And then you can start to understand like, hey, if they're low on energy, maybe we should use Michael's movement schedule for them and get them a little bit more energized. Understanding where people are, meeting them at their chronotype turns out to really work out well. And if you're looking to increase your budget, either with your boss or your partner, yeah. um, or even if you want to find times for intimacy, like yeah. all of these things can actually be found based on your energetic chronotype. It's, it's like blowing my mind because <laughs> it's pretty I, cool. truly like having that conversation with your kids, not fighting upstream basically right. is what exactly. it's about. You know, just trying to force the conversation every single morning. Like you're saying, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, knocking, <laughs> knocking on a brick or whatever, whatever that saying is, but it's just, it's never going to work. And I can absolutely see that. Um, even just within my own family and or like else? types for fit times for fitness for the kids, you know, when she's exactly. tired, ballet is late, but she's already expent all of her, her energy. hundred so, percent. And one of the yeah. other things that's interesting is you, so you're going to see this in your girls is they're going to go through multiple chronotypes before they get to the one that's set. So when they were itty bitty babies, they were probably lions, right? They went to bed super early and they got up at the crack of dawn, right? Now they're kind of moving into, I don't know, how old are they? They're lions. They're still lions. Oh, <laughs> they're taking after their dad. One huh? Yeah. My one-year-old's a little bit like a bear. Like she'll sleep a little bit, but that. Gotcha. Well, yeah. Your you're that. doomed. I'm just yeah. letting you know now. I know. You, you better, you better. Well, that's why we're ready, learning girl. about energy. <laughs> the Keep It Simple Sexy podcast is brought to you by KO Body Care. Have you guys ever felt the same, a little bloated, ate something that didn't mix well with your tummy? Well, I'm going to let you in on my personal hack. KO Body Care's clean plant based supplement, Bloat Be Gone, and it will be gone. As the founder and CEO of KO, we spent so long getting these formulas perfect, and this one really works instantly. Our customers are just as obsessed with it as I am. What I love about this one is that it soothes bloating and digestive discomfort 
fast while healing over time. So I always slip this one in my purse. I'm going out to dinner and that way I could throw it in some water, drink it and feel great. Try it out for yourself and see the bloat and discomfort start to disappear, leaving you feeling your best. Head to kobodycare.com and use our code KISS20 for 20% off your first purchase. Let's say you're surrounded by people that are not your chronotype, that are yep. messing with your chronotype, mm-hmm. how you break the four types of energy or how to yeah. build them and where we get mm-hmm. them from, how they're destroyed into yeah. four different types. Can you talk about that a little sure. bit? Absolutely. So <laughs> so when we were developing the book and thinking about what is energy, right? It's kind of like saying like, what is sleep, right? So I've been a sleep doctor for 23 years. Sleep is actually reasonably easy to define. There are stages, there are cycles, we know what they are, things like that. But energy, how do you define energy, right? And so I started to really think about it. And I I think that not limiting it, but I think there are at least four different types of energy that we can take advantage of. Like, so one is eating energy. So fuel, right? Put it in the body to make it at the body go. Uh, number two is actually movement. Like you ever notice how once you start moving, it's easier to move. I think there was a, a Einstein said, you know, a body at rest ha- tends to stay at rest. A body in motion tends to stay in motion, right? Um, there's emotional energy. This is one that not a lot of people think about, but is humongous for energy drains, like the energy vampires floating around in your world that suck the energy right out of you. We'll talk about them uh, in a moment. And then there is resting energy. So is there ener- do you get energy from sleep and or what is rest compared to sleep? There's actually data now to show if you just lie in bed in a dark room with your eyes closed, it's actually rejuvenative at times. So there's lots and lots of different things that people can do. But those four types of energy are what we focus in on the book. Um, and we ask people to monitor their energy. So we say, hey, we want you to look at your energy five times a day. Uh, and we have you actually put a, an alarm on your cell phone right? That says, hey, what's your energy? Zero to 10. Um, And you do that five times throughout the daytime to start to learn, hey, where's my energy lull or low? To be honest, lots of people have it after lunch. Uh, That's Mm -hmm. a very common time, right? To have a low energy profile. And so we Mm -hmm. can give you things to do, whether it's movement, whether it's go outside and get sunlight, whether it's watch a funny TV show and get some laughter in your life, or even listen to some music. But we've got lots of ways to up the energy for sure. And I can imagine even with that timer and just checking in and tuning into yourself, maybe sometimes it's a little bit off, but like you said, maybe there's like an emotional toll or something is, you know, draining you or it's like the, you know, it could be holidays, the finances, you're talking to somebody, blah, blah, blah. But I think in the sense of tuning in to be like, oh, wow, I don't feel good every time I'm having a conversation or this person's even texting me or I'm on social media, who knows? You know, Mm -hmm. maybe it's like you're not even following the right people and that emotional sense is like having a drain on your psyche, which in turn affects everything else. It really does, you know, and and so what we so when people are like monitoring their energy, sometimes they'll notice that that before dinner sort of time frame is where they call somebody or they talk to somebody that turns out to be an energy vampire, right? The one who just you know just sucks it all out of you type of thing. And so we try to give you uh, equalizers, right, to overcome that because here's how I view it: energy drains. I'm sorry, energy gains need to outpace energy drains for you to have energy, right? So energy is change. So your body's ability to change. And so being able to work through all of this um, isn't as hard as it might sound. So once again, five times a day, set your phone, you put in a number one to 10. Once you've figured that part out, um, hopefully then you take my chrono quiz and my energy quiz. And that tells us your chronotype and your body type which I've already kind of told you a little bit so far. So now once you've got all this information, it's about application. So we've already talked about the intermittent fasting. Is it okay to jump into the movement side of things? Yeah, please do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have five different kinds of movements. Now I wanna be clear, these aren't workout movements. These aren't fitness movements. These aren't gonna get you in shape. They are designed, however, to either increase your energy or maintain your energy level. So everybody starts off with the same one in the morning, that's a stretch. 
kind of makes sense, right? You've been in bed, you know, kind of give it one of those, kind of loosen up all the stuff that's going on in there and get yourself feeling a little bit. Actually, that felt kind of good doing it. Yourself. I know. I really want to stretch. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to sit still. Though, but yeah. like, oh, no, yes. I think you should, girl. Just give it one of these. Give it one of those. Like we're all, yeah, there it is. Out. That's what we need. That's what we need. So that's the first one is the stretch. Okay. Then the next um, three different ones, they, they could be in different orders depending upon your chronotype, but they're all one of these three things. So first one is a shake. You ever notice when animals get up, what do they do? You know, they do that whole funky thing. And like, I just did that. And it's like, oh my God, like, I feel like I have more energy now. Right? <laughs> so shake can actually be helpful. Um, the, the third one is called bounce. So that could be a jumping jack. It could be just jumping up and down. It could be skipping. Now, let me just be clear. I know these things sound a little silly, okay? I'm just going to let you know. And yes, my wife makes fun of me when I'm skipping down the driveway. But I have to tell you, it is so much freaking fun. Like, I haven't skipped. I'm 53 years old. Like, I don't think I had skipped for like 30, 40 years at the, that point. So doing that again was just kind of fun. Like, I, I, like, it gave me energy. So the bounce can be very helpful. The third one, uh, rather, the fourth one is called build. So this is one where we use a large muscle group. So chest, uh, uh, quads, glutes, something like that. So you might be doing squats, you might be doing sit-ups, you might be doing push-ups. Again, not to, not to the point of even breaking a sweat. We're talking five minutes here. Nothing super duper crazy fantastic. And then everybody ends the day with balance. And so balance is usually some form of a yoga pose. My personal favorite is a tree pose. Um, because here's the thing when you're, when you're kind of there and you've got your one leg up and you're, and you're really concentrating on balancing, you can't think of anything else. And let's be honest, that's the biggest problem with most people is they can't turn off their brain at night. And so this is one of those ways that helps introduce the idea of being present, being calm and kind of slowing down your daytime. And so those are the five movements. We call them the five by five. So you do five things for five minutes type of thing. Um, but it's really a lot of fun. And what happens is those five times of day where you were checking your energy level, we actually flip it and we use those times to exercise. Uh, I love this so much. And I can say this in this, even in the sense, even though this is not fitness, but I always talk about, um, you know, years ago, I created 20 minute programs. This is before mm -hmm. so many of them launched because I was like, it's just about fitting it into your day. Yeah. And having been in fitness for so long and really overdoing, and we're talking about how that actually usurps your well, energy. Kills you. It's really about balance, though. I mean, if you're right? adding these small things into your day, your posture is better, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If you're working your glutes, if you're opening up, if you're adding stability and balance into your day, even a little bit, even if it's a turn off your brain, as we age, all of this can decrease. If we're not, you know, using it, we lose it. And but that's still going to up that metabolism a little bit, up that calorie burn, as opposed yeah. to just sitting there hunched all day long. And I love the jumping, the skipping. I was skipping with my daughter yesterday, but I, and I See? think, why can't we act like children? They, it's just so right? amazing to watch them be silly and, and do these things and not really think about it. And why do adults have to at fully adult, I guess, you know? Right. And, and think about it. Who's, who's got the most energy in your house? Yeah. Follow your kids, right? Yeah, totally. Because they follow their energetic flow, right? Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. they don't do things they don't want to do because it's not fun because there's no energy. <laughs> like it's really kind of interesting. So it is a lot like being a kid again with a couple yeah. of rules in there to lock and load. So that way you make sure you get that balance. Going. Mm -hmm. I love that. And even, um, you know, rebounding, you're talking about jumping up and down. I've always loved rebounding on the trampoline um, yeah. to boost serotonin, boost Absolutely. energy, boost your lymphatics. That mm -hmm. one's awesome too. Okay, so we want to break down some of the the other areas as well, like diet. Maybe we talked a little bit about intermittent fasting and how we can schedule that. But what else? You know, what else yeah. is your meal plan throughout the day? So we so we decided not to try to tackle what you should eat because I'm going to mm -hmm. be honest with you. There are so many different ways to eat out there. I am not a nutritionist. I'm a sleep doctor, yeah. um, and so I said I'm down with the intermittent fasting, but. I can give you some hints of some things to avoid and some things to add that are going to be more friendly, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, caffeine and alcohol have effects on your sleep system, on your metabolism, on your energy system, things like that. Now, to be clear, I ain't saying you shouldn't have coffee and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have <laughs> alcohol, okay? I like them both, all right? Yeah. <laughs> but if you can find the right time for them, 
they won't slow you down energetically, right? Mm -hmm. So we have some very interesting rules that we give people about caffeine, alcohol, and things like that, which is important. But I want to talk about one other area that I think is equally as important that people haven't been talking about a lot when they're talking about this whole thing, which is sugar, mm -hmm. okay? Processed sugar is terrible for moving, for, for processing, and for sleeping. Like, it's just not a good idea. And let me be clear. I love processed sugar. Okay. I, when I first started intermittent fasting, I ate a pint of ice cream every night for a month. Okay. <laughs> for a month. Sounded like my pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might've been. Um, and I didn't gain a pound because I was intermittent. I felt like shit, but I didn't yeah. gain a pound, right? Because of all the dairy and all. Of, I mean, it was terrible, yeah. right? So yeah. finding alternatives to the sweetness, I've got a sweet mm -hmm. tooth. Like I, there's not much I can do about that, but mm -hmm. I can find alternatives that are going to be healthier. So do yourself a favor. Try to stay away from high fructose corn syrup. Try to stay with things like cane sugar, um, processed sugar, processed foods. If it has a shelf life, it's probably not a good idea to be eating too much of it. <laughs> yeah. To, to be fair. Um, and you can get natural sugar, mostly in fruit um, is a great way to get your natural sugar. Um, also foods with higher glycemic indexes. You want to be careful about eating those too close to bedtime. Um, so thinking through some of those ideas, I think is important for people to do. Avoiding sugar, specifically processed sugar is going to be a biggie. And then here's my general rules for caffeine is you want to stop caffeine by about 2 p.m., most people don't know it, but caffeine has a half-life of six to eight hours. So half-life means that half of it stays in your system while half of it has been uh, depleted. So yeah. at 10 o'clock at night, 50% of the coffee, energy drinks, and whatever it is that you've been doing during the day is still on board. So you really need to slow that down. If you possibly could stop by 10 o'clock in the morning or 12, it would be a lot better for you. Um, this is this is for uh, my our producer who's on the back end of this right now. Oh, she <laughs> having was trouble sleeping and drinking too much coffee. Yeah, Rachel, so that, that's for you. So I have to stop at like ten, or I I am up actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, in the morning. So yeah, that's a very um, similar circular problem that people have: is you don't sleep well, so you slog on the coffee, and then you don't sleep well, and then you have more coffee, and it's it's this terrible kind of avalanche that that occurs. So if you can slow down your caffeine, I, I do. I do want to say one thing never cold turkey yourself off of caffeine i had two patients end up in the er believe Ooh. it or not they were pot a day coffee drinkers Oof. and one ended up with seizures uh which was a real mess trust me on this one so caffeine is no joke um if wow. you're having your triple shot latte grande whatever the heck it's called thing um you might want to understand what you're putting in your body and how it's going to have an effect on your sleep Alcohol is a little bit different. Um, alcohol makes us feel sleepy. So a lot of people think of alcohol as a sleep aid. Oddly enough, it's the number one sleep aid in the world. More people use booze to fall asleep than anything, but it's not the best idea. And I'll tell you why. Alcohol, while it helps you fall asleep, it pretty much destroys stages three and four sleep, which is your physical restoration. So to be honest with you, the amount you drink and how close to bedtime are the two factors that you want to take a, take a close look at. So here's my general rule. Number one, you every time you drink a glass of alcohol, uh, wine, beer, spirits, what have you, you want to make sure that you're doing it within a particular time frame. So as an example, we know that your liver produces an enzyme that starts about four o'clock in the afternoon and goes until about eight o'clock at night. What does that sound like to you? Sounds like happy hour to me. Okay. So- oh, wow. here, right? Kind of interesting that those two mm -hmm. fall in place with each other, mm -hmm. right? So if you have your alcohol a little bit later in the day, that can be helpful because you have an enzyme that's going to be able to get it out of you. Once you get past the second drink, something interesting happens to you. You no longer get relaxed and kind of more social. Your cortisol kicks in and I'll tell you why, because your brain is going toxic and the, brain, brain, and the way you know that is because you're buzzed right? Oh, your man. buzz is this toxic toxicity that's going on in your brain. And so you know what your brain does? It says, oh shit, something bad is going on. So it shoots cortisol and adrenaline straight up. I got news for you. You go two drinks in and your cortisol jacks. Now you're an energetic drunk. Okay. That's not good for sleep. So here's the plan. All right. Limited to two drinks, have one glass of water for each drink and stop having, having had your last sip approximately three to three hours before bed. 
So here's what you can do. If you go out to dinner and it's 6.30, you can have a glass of wine at 6.30. You can have another glass of wine, have a glass of water, then have another glass of wine at seven o'clock. And by 7.30, you're done. You have your uh, second glass of water. And then if you're not going to bed until 10 o'clock, you're perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. But drinking right up at like, let's be honest, there's a really big difference between going to sleep and passing out. <laughs> right. And you end up waking up in the, you know, the middle of the night anyway. It is. It's you exactly it's not you, restful sleep. Yeah. It's not reparative through, sleep. Right. You burn through all the sugar and the alcohol. You wake up in the middle of the night. You got to pee. You bang your foot on something. You're probably still in your clothes. You know, you probably haven't brushed your teeth. I mean, it's gross. So, like, at the end of the day, like, be an adult, right? You know, yeah. like, drink yeah. when you're supposed to drink you know, drink water, get ready for bed and have a good time. Yeah. Still have a good time. Absolutely. Well, let's do, let's break down. Do you want, is there anything else that you want to add to the emotional and the restful areas as well? I do want to talk a little bit about emotional energy and those energy vampires that we were talking about earlier. So mm -hmm. here's the bottom line. We all have people in our lives that suck us dry from energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They may be people that we love. They may be people that we don't love so much, but they're in our lives. And, and you can't always avoid them or excommunicate them or get them out of your life. And so what you have to do is you have to have an escape hatch, right? Or a counterbalance to this emotional vampire. And so you have to figure out what are things that uplift you. Um, and so two things that are big in my book are music and laughter. Um, <laughs> those are great ways to boost your energy. So I'll tell you a story about my son. Have I told this story before? I don't think I have. Um, so every morning I would wake up my son, who's my older of my two children. He's even more grumpy than my daughter. And I would walk in and I'd be like, Cooper, it's time to get up five minutes later. Cooper, it's time. I mean, it was terrible. Like we would get into a fight about it. I'm the sleep doctor for God's sakes. I don't want to get into a fight with my son in the morning to wake up. I wanted to ask up. Right. So then I turned to him and I said, okay, Cooper, here's the deal. You can turn on your music at whatever volume level you want, but you have to be up by 715. And so he was like, okay. So I motivated him. So he got to be the DJ of the morning of the breakfast, right? And his big his favorite one was this is this is a throwback. He liked to listen to the Beastie Boys. You got to fight for your right to party at 715 in the morning on like a God bless you. Set. That's a lot. Yeah. Yes, right. And here's the thing. <laughs> The whole family loved it. We were all oh. bopping around, dancing around. You got to fight for your right. You know, like we we're having a great time, but it energetically lifted us up. Like, you know, when you're driving along and a great tune comes on the radio, you start bopping around and you've changed your energy quotient pretty dramatically at that point. Mm -hmm. um, laughter is another good one. My son um, has got one of these apps that sends you a joke every day and they're pretty funny. So I get it. And if I'm in a lull, I know that my energy lull has a tendency to come um, actually in the early morning because I'm a night owl wolf. So it's hard for me to energetically get somewhat from 10 to 12 sometimes. Like once I'm up, I'm up. But then around 10 o'clock, I really start to slow down. So I'll pull out my phone and he will have sent me a joke and I'll read it and I'll probably laugh about it. And all of a sudden, click. I'm on a different trajectory. So there's lots of these things that you can do emotionally to change your energy level, which a lot of people didn't think about. And then on rest, let's talk about napping for just a brief, brief moment here. Napping is great unless you have insomnia. If you're one of the listeners out there who has a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep, it's probably not the best idea to nap. Um, but look, if you only got five hours, five and a half hours last night, you're really dragging it and you need a nap. There's nothing wrong with a nap, but you want to make the nap short. Um, you don't want to go over about 20, 25 minutes. Cause if you do, you ever taken a nap and felt worse? Not I mean, I, I think a lot of my girlfriends, we all complain about the same thing actually is that we don't like naps because we feel worse after them. Now I'm going to teach you the secret. I'm going to yeah. teach you actually a hack, a sleep mm -hmm. hack for napping. Okay. So I used to tell people about this thing that I created called a Napa latte, which is where you would drink a, a cup of drip black coffee, throw a couple ice cubes in just to make it cold then take your 25 minute nap and you'd wake up and you'd have a lot of energy and you'd be ready to go. I've been doing that for years, working with my CEOs, my athletes, my movie stars, have them doing all this. And then I just started working with a company and we created a product. It's kind of a crazy name. It's called Nap Jitsu, right? Like <laughs> Jiu Jitsu, but Nap yep. Jitsu. And what it is, is it's two different pills. You take one pill and it helps you fall asleep for about 25 minutes because a lot of people can't nap during the middle of the day. Yeah. And then a second pill that has 100 milligrams of caffeine and about 600 milligrams of nootropics. Now you might ask, what is a nootropic? Nootropics are, um, are, are herbs that actually help you focus. 
uh, help, help you with your memory, help you with your attention. Uh, an example of one is like L-theanine. So the, the stuff in green tea that's so good for you, like this has got like 600 milligrams of that in there. So you fall asleep based on the valerian uh, that helps you drift off. And believe me, it's not very much. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not groggy. You sleep for 25 minutes and then the caffeine in it, I mean, seriously, dude, it's crazy how good this thing works. I'm getting that stuff. I would love to be a napper, a so happy I'll, napper. <laughs> I'll send you some. Uh, I'll send you a little gift box. I think you'll dig it. It's a lot yes. of fun. So that's one of the things that I recommend for people is napping because you know something? Some days the twins didn't go to sleep last night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, or something happened where you're just dragging it and you need a nap. Nothing wrong with taking a nap. Again, unless you're an insomniac and that's a regular occurrence, then it's going to mess up with your sleep drive and probably not the best idea. Yeah. And I think that's it too, is that it's so hard to fall asleep. So it's nice to have that support. So it's yeah. like you only have a minimal time in your day, but you know, it's like you finally fall asleep. You have to wake back up. You're dragging, whatever it may be. So that's exactly. awesome. I love yeah. that. Any other tip you want to give us to find that, that balance? Um, sure. Buy my book. I, I was going to say that you, yeah, that's, that's the best book. tip I think I can give. <laughs> um, but I, but I will in all honesty tell you that um, the book is very straightforward. You can figure out what your chronotype is in your body type. You can actually create a program just for you. I hate these books where it's like one size fits all and everybody's supposed to be the same. Nobody is the same, anything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've really delineated it out so you can find exactly what you are from a body type and a chronotype perspective and then really create an eating, movement, and sleeping schedule that really works for your genetics. I'm not telling you what to eat um, other than stay away from sugar, caffeine, and alcohol if you possibly can. Um, mm -hmm. you, can be a, you can be a vegan, you can be a vegetarian, you can be a paleo, you can be a keto, you can be a high fat, high carb, I don't care. But mm -hmm. keeping it in these parameters of when to eat and how long to fast, that's what's going to get you there. I love this. This is so different than we've heard um, on any of our podcasts, honestly, and just in the sense of energy, because, you know, you, you've you heard all the, we've heard all of the basics of stuff, but this is in breaking it into body type and then in breaking it into chronotype, which I love. And in your book, it is so easy to figure it out yeah. of like what it is and then how you can apply that with a little use of like what you're saying figuring yeah. out, timing yourself, learning throughout mm -hmm. your day, um, what's going on with your schedule. Absolutely. But honestly, I've been in the business for 20 years and I've never heard anything like this where right? it's more of a timing. Yeah. It's everything combined. Yeah. And so the goal was to make it scientifically valid, but straightforward enough that anybody could do it. Right. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't about a lot of philosophy. It wasn't about explaining, you know, acres and acres of science. It was like, trust me, here's the science, check it out. It's all well referenced. Now, here are the tactics. I'm not a big strategy guy. I'm more of a tactics guy. I like to be told exactly what to do, when to do it, and then get my results. And that's what we did. So we're You're super simplifying excited. simplifying it. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're super excited about it. We love having people like you come on and talk with me and get, my, get the word out. Because honestly, like your viewers and your subscribers, they're the perfect group of people to want and, and be able to really utilize this type of material in, the, in their lives. And I'm super excited about it. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is my co-author. My co-author, you might know her name is Stacey Griffith. She is the founding trainer of a company called Soul Cycle. It's that indoor bicycle thingamabob company yeah we all know soul cycle for okay, sure so, so you know soul cycle I, mm -hmm. I i didn't so i had to learn about it <laughs> um, <laughs> but i took one of her classes oh my god they're insane like these like the lights are going it's all so much fun very energetic um but you know she's the one who came up with the movement stuff and just really thinking through this idea that you can create a personalized eating sleeping and moving schedule for you to give you consistent balanced energy all day long I love it. We're all utilizing this right now. I'm going to go figure out my, I'm putting the alarm on my phone right now. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Bruce, thank you so much for tuning in today. Appreciate it. Congrats on the new book. Can you tell Thanks. us where we can find your book? Anything else that you have out there? Absolutely. So um, as you said, this was my fourth book. Um, it's I definitely going to be a good one. I think people are really going to get a lot out of it. You can get it on Amazon or if you go to energizemyself.com, you can pre-order it there. And there's a special pre-order program with lots of fun gifts and value ads if you'd like that. Um, if you're looking to learn more about sleep in general and want to follow me on social, uh, my handle is the sleep doctor on Twitter, Facebook, 
all of LinkedIn, um, TikTok. I even have TikTok videos now. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. I was just going to say, they need to follow your social. You're very entertaining. Yeah. So <laughs> We have a lot of fun and I don't take myself too seriously, yeah. but I do take my science very seriously. So like please it. check it all out. I'd love to have the opportunity to educate you. And I want to just thank you once again for having me on the show. So much fun, so much energy. It's exactly where I wanted to be. So thanks. Yes. Thank you. I'm feeling better already as well. Right. And thank you everybody for tuning in today. You can, you know, boost that energy, check in to our notes from today's show to see all the tips that we have to feel your best, look your best and, and boost that energy. Dr. Bruce, it's been amazing. And everybody have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and feel free to share this with a friend who needs to hear it. Have questions you need answered? Text me at 1-310-361-8697. Make sure you're following me on social at Christine Bullock and have a healthy, happy week. See you next time.